There are very few people in Congress that are actually left-wing, actually truly progressive. You know, there's AOC, Ilhan Omar, uh, Pramila Jayapal, Ro Khanna, Tulsi Gabbard, to name a few. But progressives in general, even if we don't necessarily have power, we do have one very important advantage, and that is we have very large platforms because the ideas that we're talking about are incredibly popular. People in Congress, like AOC, she has millions of Twitter followers, so oftentimes she'll use that platform to promote progressive policy ideas. She'll use it to name and shame people, even within her own party, who do the bidding of Donald Trump and the Republicans. And so, you know, on that note, I've talked before about how Nancy Pelosi puts more effort into resisting progressives within her own party than actually resisting Republicans like Donald Trump and Mitch McConnell. And you're going to see that example come up again, because when you see AOC use her platform to her advantage to get the word out. Well, Nancy Pelosi is now saying, don't do that. Stop doing that. So the reason why this is a problem, AOC's use of Twitter and social media as a problem, for example, to Nancy Pelosi, is because this makes people like Nancy Pelosi and blue dog Democrats look really bad. Because if you see people like AOC and Ilhan Omar tweeting about student loan debt cancellation, everyone's going to see that when a progressive does it since progressives are more popular. And then constituents across the country will ask their representative, hey, why aren't you supporting what these popular progressives are supporting, like AOC and Ilhan Omar? It essentially forces other lawmakers within the Democratic Party to do better. And they absolutely hate this. Progressives are popular because they have the winning message. I mean, think about this. It's not just about like people in elected positions of power. How many centrist YouTube channels actually exist that are popular? Like how many pro-establishment Democratic Party YouTube channels exist? I can't name any, but I can name a bunch of anti-establishment progressive channels, you know, like mine's, Kyle Kalinske's, uh, David Dole's. There's a plethora of them, and, you know, the reason why progressives are popular is because we're saying things that are common sense that the establishment can't say because they don't want to offend and upset their donors. So Nancy Pelosi, what she tried to do in a closed-door meeting was uh, scold progressives who are using Twitter to their advantage to further the progressive movement, and we got a little bit of, you know, what happened according to insider accounts, and it just, it proves yet again Nancy Pelosi does not care at all about progressive policies. I mean, she could be saying, hey, AOC, let's use your Twitter account to promote this anti-corruption bill that, you know, the Democratic Party is pushing. But she's not. She's just saying, uh, don't use Twitter for reasons X, Y, and Z. So Heather Cagle and Sarah Ferris of Politico Report, Speaker Nancy Pelosi chided progressives in a closed-door meeting Wednesday, calling on them to address their intra-party grievances privately rather than blasting their centrist colleagues on Twitter. Pelosi's comments, which were described as stern, came during the first full caucus meeting since a major blow-up over emergency border funding last month between progressive and moderate lawmakers, as well as a recent spat with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and her freshman allies. So again, you got a complaint? You come talk to me about it, Pelosi told Democrats, according to a source in the room. But do not tweet about our members and expect us to think that that is just okay. Democrats inside the room said they interpreted that remark in part as a shot at Representative Mark Pocan, co-chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, who called moderate Democrats members of the Child Abuse Caucus in a tweet over their support for the Senate's version of the emergency humanitarian package. Speaking behind closed doors Wednesday morning, Pelosi also gave an emphatic defense of the moderates in the caucus, of course, according to multiple sources, telling the room that they're critical to holding the House majority. Pelosi told Democrats not to make the Blue Dog Coalition their targets and instead criticize her publicly if they need to go after someone. Pelosi also indirectly criticized Ocasio-Cortez's chief of staff, according to Democrats in the room, as she told members to tell their staffers to think twice before they tweet. Saika Chakrabadi, Ocasio-Cortez's chief of staff, went after Pelosi in a series of tweets over the weekend, criticizing everything from her comments on the squad to her stance against impeachment. Chakrabadi also tweeted scathing criticism of the Blue Dogs, calling them the new Southern 
Southern Democrats. They certainly seem hell-bent to do black and brown people today what the old Southern Democrats did in the 40s, Chakrabadi wrote on Twitter before deleting the post. So this is interesting because it conveys to us that Nancy Pelosi knows how powerful a tool social media is. And what she's essentially trying to do is uh, defang the bite that, you know, social media has. So AOC feels less inclined to air her grievances about corporate Democrats on Twitter. But I say to hell with that. Because these are people who, if they're not going to do the right thing, then they need to be named and shamed. And think about Nancy Pelosi's priorities here. She's defending blue dog Democrats saying, please don't go after them because they are helping us keep our majority. But she has no regard for the progressives who are also helping Democrats keep the majority. Don't you care about appeasing progressives too? If you truly want to keep a solid majority, of course she doesn't, because Nancy Pelosi is firmly in the camp of the Blue Dogs, hence why she constantly goes after progressives. And there was a lot of pearl clutching from centrist Democrats after Mark Pocan made that tweet, because they didn't like that he put them in their place and called them out for their negligence, quite frankly. Abigail Spanberger was one of them who said, How dare he say this about us? We care about the children. Right, but your actions are telling us otherwise, that you don't actually care about the children because you literally voted for a bill with no accountability at these migrant concentration camps. The way that people continuously defend Nancy Pelosi after week after week, we get articles like this, it boggles my mind. I don't get it. If you're on the left, how can you keep defending Nancy Pelosi? How can you keep defending her? And let's not pretend that AOC is, you know, condemning people overtly and explicitly. You know, she'll oftentimes air disagreements with people in her own party on Twitter, but it's never anything that's as scathing as something that Donald Trump would put out or any Republican would put out. I mean, these are very tepid and mild criticisms, but the fact that Nancy Pelosi can't even handle that, it really shows you how fragile her ego is. So, um, I don't know what else to say. Nancy Pelosi has got to go. She needs to lose her next election. And there is someone, Shahid Buttar, who is offering us a way out of this nightmare with Nancy Pelosi dictating the direction of the Democratic Party. It's going in a very increasingly corporatist and moderate way. And that's unacceptable. So if you want to affect change, go to shahidforchange.us, support Shahid Buttar's campaign. Imagine if Shahid pulled an AOC and beat Nancy Pelosi, it would absolutely terrify everyone in the establishment. And that's what we need. So let's do it. Let's work towards that because it's not undoable. It's going to be difficult, but we can do it. It's just a matter of how much effort we put into it. Subscribe if you like this video, folks. Mike's tremendous. And he's doing a really, really good job. Many people are telling me about how wonderful the Humanist Report is. Bigly.